The Nicobar shrew is a critically endangered species of mammal in the family Sericidae. It is endemic to the Great Nicobar Island. This mina is arboreal and is found mainly in flocks in hill forests. Like most starlings, the Nia's hill mina is fairly omnivorous, eating fruit, nectar and insects. This bird is famous for its talking abilities and fetches a high price. It is under pressure from trapping for the illegal pet trade and from habitat destruction, since most indigenous forest has been destroyed. The macaques' natural habitat is rainforest, but they can also be found in riverine and coastal swamp forests. They live high above the forest floor in the canopy, forage between 24 and 36 meters and may sleep as high as 45 meters. The primary food of the species is figs. Due to deforestation by immigrants from the Indonesian mainland, the species is now listed as critically endangered. The primary reasons behind deforestation on the island are the clearing of large areas of land for cash crop and oil palm plantations, as well as commercial logging. As a result, the water levels in the forest rivers fluctuate to a much greater degree than before. The alternating flooding and low water levels has also caused an increase in the population of malarial mosquitoes. The blue-banded kingfisher, is a species of kingfisher in the subfamily Alcidinini. Its natural habitats are subtropical or tropical moist lowland forest, subtropical or tropical mangrove forest, and rivers. The Sumatran ground cuckoo's diet is thought to consist of invertebrates, small mammals, and reptiles. Deforestation is the main threat and was found to result in an average 2% loss of forest. Because it is a ground forager, the Sumatran ground cuckoo may also be susceptible to bycatch through hunting by use of snares. A bird was recently captured in a snare that was almost certainly set for red jungle fowl. Members of Sumatran rhinoceros once inhabited rainforests, swamps, and cloud forests in India, China and the whole southeastern Asia. They are now critically endangered, with only five substantial populations in the wild, four in Sumatra and one in Borneo. Their numbers are difficult to determine because they are solitary animals that are widely scattered across their range, but they are estimated to number fewer than 100. In 2015, researchers announced that the Sumatran rhinoceros from Borneo had become extinct. Sumatran rhinoceroses are solitary creatures except for pairing before mating and during offspring rearing. From the early 1990s, the population decline was estimated at more than 50% per decade, and the small, scattered populations now face high risks of inbreeding depression. Most remaining habitat is in relatively inaccessible mountainous areas of Indonesia. This species has been overhunted for many centuries, leading to the current greatly reduced, and still declining, population. The rhinos are difficult to observe and hunt directly, so poachers make use of spear traps and pit traps. Although the hardwoods in the rainforests of the Sumatran rhino are destined for international markets and not widely used in domestic construction, the number of logging permits for these woods has increased dramatically because of the tsunami. However, while this species has been suggested to be highly sensitive to habitat disturbance, apparently it is of little importance compared to hunting, as it can withstand more or less any forest condition.
As the Sumatran rhinoceros, the Sumatran elephant was once widespread on the island. Due to conversion of forests into human settlements, agricultural areas and plantations, many of the Sumatran elephant populations have lost their habitat to humans. As a result, many elephants have been removed from the wild or directly killed. In addition to conflict-related death, elephants are also targets of poaching for their ivory. Between 1985 and 2007, 50% of Sumatran elephants died. Between 1980 and 2005, 69% of potential Sumatran elephant habitat was lost within just one elephant generation, and the driving forces that caused this habitat loss still remain essentially unchecked. There is clear, direct evidence from two provinces, Riau and Lampung, which shows entire elephant populations have disappeared as a result of habitat loss. Compared with the Bornean orangutan, the Sumatran orangutan tends to be more frugivorous and especially insectivorous. An orangutan will break off a tree branch that is about a foot long, snap off the twigs and fray one end with its teeth. The orangutan will use the stick to dig in tree holes for termites. They will also use the stick to poke a bee's nest wall, move it around and catch the honey. As well as being used as tools, tree branches are a means of transportation for the Sumatran orangutan. The orangutans are the heaviest mammals to travel by tree, which makes them particularly susceptible to the changes in arboreal compliance. To deal with this, their locomotion is characterized by slow movement, long contact times, and an impressively large array of locomotors' postures. Sumatrans encounter threats such as logging, both legal and illegal, wholesale conversion of forest to agricultural land and oil palm plantations, and fragmentation by roads. Oil companies use a method of deforestation to reuse land for palm oil. This land is taken from the forest in which Sumatran orangutans live. An assessment of forest loss in the 1990s concluded that forests supporting at least 1,000 orangutans were lost each year within the loser ecosystem alone. Sumatran orangutans have developed a highly functioning cardiovascular system. However, with this development of hugely improved air sacs in their lungs, air sacculitis has become more prevalent among orangutans in this species. Air sacculitis is similar to streptococcal infection, strep throat in Homo sapiens. The bacterial infection is becoming increasing common in captive orangutans, due to the fact that they are exposed to the human strain of streptococcus. Tapanuli orangutans resemble Sumatran orangutans more than Bornean orangutans in body build and fur color. However, they have frizzier hair, smaller heads, and flatter and wide faces. Dominant male Tapanuli orangutans have prominent mustaches and large flat cheek pads, known as flanges, covered in downy hair. Both male and female Tapanuli orangutans have beards but with Bornean orangutans, only the males do. The loud, long-distance call or, long call, of male Tapanuli orangutans has a higher maximum frequency than that of Sumatran orangutans. Their diet is also unique, containing unusual items like caterpillars and conifer cones. Tapanuli orangutans are thought to be exclusively arboreal as scientists have not seen them descend to the ground in over 3,000 hours of observation. With fewer than 800 individuals restricted to an area of about 1,000 square kilometers, the Tapanuli orangutan is the rarest great ape. It is listed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature because of hunting, conflict with humans, the illegal wildlife trade, rampant habitat destruction for small-scale agriculture, mining and a proposed hydroelectric dam, the Batang Toru Hydropower Project, in the area with the highest density of orangutans, which could impact up to 10% of its already dwindling habitat and degrade important wildlife corridors. The Sumatran tiger is the only surviving tiger population in the Sunda Islands, where the Bali and Javan tigers are extinct. This population was listed as critically endangered, as it was estimated at 441 to 679 individuals, with no subpopulation larger than 50 individuals and a declining trend. It is darker in fur color and has broader stripes than the Javan tiger. Stripes tend to dissolve into spots near their ends, and on the back, flanks and hind legs are lines of small, dark spots between the regular stripes. They prefer forest with dense understory cover and steep slope, and they strongly avoid forest areas with high human influence in the forms of encroachment and settlement. Major threats include habitat loss due to expansion of palm oil plantations and planting of acacia plantations, prey-based depletion, and illegal trade primarily for the domestic market. 
The expansion of plantations is increasing greenhouse gas emissions, playing a part in anthropogenic climate change, thus further adding to environmental pressures on endangered species. The Java stingery has only been found off Java, perhaps in the vicinity of Jakarta. Its exact range, and depth and habitat preferences, are unknown but probably very restricted. Very little is known of the natural history of the Java stingery. It is presumably a placental viviparous with a small litter size, as in other stingeries. There is heavy fishing activity within its range, as well as habitat degradation from the proximity of major population centers. While it is possible that captured specimens have gone unrecognized, if this species still survives its population would almost certainly be gravely imperiled. The bright green plumage of the Javan green magpie is the result of the yellow pigment lutein, which they gain from their insect diet. They also feed on small lizards and frogs. Initially juveniles are bluish, but they become green after their first molt. In captivity, adults turn bluish if their diet is inadequate. Once common, the species has declined drastically as a result of habitat loss and illegal capture for the wild animal trade. The size of the remaining wild population is unknown, but perhaps only around 50 individuals, while others speculate that the lack of recent sightings might mean that it already is extinct in the wild. The Javan slow loris population is in sharp decline because of poaching for the exotic pet trade, and sometimes for traditional medicine. Remaining populations have low densities, and habitat loss is a major threat. Like other lorises, the Javan slow loris is nocturnal and arboreal, relying on vines and lianas. However, the animal has been observed moving on the ground to cross open spaces in disturbed habitat. Its numbers are still decreasing, primarily because of poaching. In Indonesia, it is sometimes used in traditional medicine, because of myths of it having magical and curative properties, but it is more frequently sold as an exotic pet. The species is easily captured because of its slow movement, nocturnal habits, and its tendency to sleep on exposed branches. They are both actively sought for the pet trade and collected opportunistically when felling forests. Its habitat is also in decline, although most of the habitat loss occurred by the mid-1980s. Once the most widespread of Asian rhinoceroses, the Javan rhinoceros is now critically endangered, with only one known population in the wild, and no individuals in captivity. It is possibly the rarest large mammal on Earth, with a population of as few as 58 to 61. The Javan rhino can live around 30 to 45 years in the wild. It historically inhabited lowland rainforest, wet grasslands, and large floodplains. It is mostly solitary, except for courtship and offspring rearing, though groups may occasionally congregate near wallows and salt licks. Aside from humans, adults have no predators in their range. The Javan rhino usually avoids humans. Scientists and conservationists rarely study the animals directly due to their extreme rarity and the danger of interfering with such an endangered species. The WWF reports that people are encroaching and developing areas near the Ujing National Park and thus destroying the last known habitat of the Javan rhino. The Javan leopard was initially described as being black with dark black spots and silver-gray eyes. Javan leopards have either a normal spotted coat, or a recessive phenotype resulting in an all-black coat. The Javan leopard is threatened by loss of habitat, prey base depletion, and poaching due to human population growth and agricultural expansion. Conflict between local people and leopards is also considered to be a main threat to the Javan leopard. Java has lost more than 90% of its natural vegetation and is one of the most densely populated islands in the world. Christmas frigatebird is a large lightly built seabird with brownish-black plumage, long narrow wings and a deeply forked tail. 
The male has an egg-shaped white patch on its belly and a striking red gular sac which it inflates to attract a mate. They feed on fish taken in flight from the ocean's surface, and sometimes indulge in kleptoparasitism, harassing other birds to force them to regurgitate their food. The Christmas frigatebird is endemic to Christmas Island and breeds in only four main nesting colonies. In 2003 there were 1,200 breeding pairs but as frigate birds normally breed every other year, the total adult population was estimated to be between 3,600 and 7,200 individuals. The Christmas Island Shrew is a terrestrial animal that occupies tall plateau rainforests with deep soil, as well as the shallow soil of terrace rainforests. The reasons for the population's reduction are unknown but potential threats include disease, habitat loss, habitat alteration due to invasive weeds, predation from species such as cats and black rats, small population size, and mortality from road traffic. The Bali mina has blue bare skin around the eyes, grayish legs and a yellow bill. Both sexes are similar. It is critically endangered and fewer than 100 adults are assumed to currently exist in the wild. In its natural habitat it is inconspicuous, using treetops for cover and unlike other starlings usually coming to the ground only to drink or to find nesting materials, this would seem to be an adaptation to its noticeability to predators when out in the open. The Bali mina is critically endangered, and the wild population has been close to extinction since at least 1994. Trade even in captive bred specimens is strictly regulated and the species is not generally available legally to private individuals. Due to ongoing habitat loss, small population size and limited range, the Bawin deer is evaluated as critically endangered. It has few natural enemies except for birds of prey and large snakes such as pythons. They live in woodlands and upland forests with dense undergrowth which is used for shelter, providing a refuge in which the deer sleep and rest during the day. The cause for population decline is human-related habitat loss. The land on which the deer live is cleared for agriculture and buildings. The World Wildlife Fund has noted that some of the factors for the decline of this species and others in Indonesia include climate changes, warming ocean temperatures, rising sea levels, prolonged droughts, and increased flooding. The Indonesian government passed a bill in 1977 protecting the endangered Bawan deer, and consequently their numbers have risen. With the help of this law their reproductive success has gone up over the years.